Okay, this video is a book review. The name of the book is called Nutrient Power, How to Heal Your Biochemistry and Heal Your Brain. The author's name is William Walsh, PhD. He's an older now, guy now. I think he's probably in his 70s, something like that. Um, he has multiple videos on YouTube. I think they're worth watching. So where's this guy coming from? What he's claiming is that if you give vitamin supplements to a lot of patients with psychiatric illness like depression, schizophrenia, that you can get dramatic, dramatic improvement in these patients. And what it's reminding me of is the Voltaire quote, the doctor amuses the patient while nature heals them. Okay, so at first glance, it seems like a vitamin sales pitch, but the guy does some good things. Well, first of all, he talks about the idea of biochemical individuality. And he's a big believer, you gotta do a whole bunch of tests <clears throat> for nutrient deficiencies, and then you treat these with nutrient therapy to replace the nutrient deficiencies, and that this all works much, much better than drugs do. So, so far, so good. I like the fact that he's trying to help people avoid psychiatric drugs. But you still ask yourself, is he just a vitamin salesman? He claims lots of these illnesses can be cured with vitamins like B6, folate, zinc, niacin, B12, manganese, vitamin E, and C. Um, you know, the book also talks a lot about the old neurotransmitter myth that these major psychiatric illnesses were caused by a deficiency of a single neurotransmitter, like the theory that depression was due to a lack of serotonin, anxiety was due to an excess of norepinephrine, schizophrenia was due to a an excess of dopamine, okay? All right, well, that's just a myth. The single neurotransmitter theory of mental illness has never been proven not even close, There's, despite billions of dollars spent to try to show it was true, they never could because it's bogus. Okay, and the greatest psychiatrists who ever lived, like Dr. Bragan, they don't even prescribe psychiatric medicine. Psychiatric medications are pretty well known to be a joke by the people who've actually studied them. The only time Bragan might give a psychiatric drug is if he's tapering a patient off something. Another good thing I liked about this book is it talked about toxin overload, like let's say from copper being associated with attention deficit, autism, depression, schizophrenia. So you'd want to lower your copper levels. Um, it, it also talks about certain other chemical overloads that can be associated with violent criminal behavior like cadmium, lead, chromium, manganese, lithium. The book goes into all the stuff about overmethylation and undermethylation. It does do a whole bunch of blood tests, and Walsh has got experience with many tens of thousands of patients. So I, I respect that. He has worked with a lot of patients. And what do I think overall is the best thing about this? Is that basically when a patient comes in with a, let's say, diagnosed with depression, you can spend a long time talking to them. I think that's good. You can try all these different vitamin supplements because I don't think they're going to cause excuse me, much harm, but I don't know if they're going to do much good either, but at least, you know, you're trying to get the patient off junk food and processed food, hopefully towards a vegan diet. Um, and you can try them on these vitamins for a little while, and hopefully just time. Time's usually the best healer of a lot of these mental illnesses. The patients who were treated without drugs for depression and schizophrenia, in the long run, they got much better outcomes. And, of course, I would encourage all the other good stuff, you know, optimal diet, lifestyle, sense of purpose, religion. So it's a way to buy time with the patient while nature heals them is, I think, the main benefit of this. So do I think it's interesting? Yeah. Do I respect the fact that he drew blood on tens of thousands of patients to try to get lab results and correlate them and make something sensible out of it? Yeah, I do think that's all good. And he also comes out of the school of thought and groups that believe mental illnesses are primarily due to metabolic problems like Abram Hoffer, Kyle Pfeiffer, and there's a lot of other ones. Uh, so I do think this is good to explore this area because potentially somebody gets labeled with one of these heavy, you know, important uh, mental illness diagnoses like depression, schizophrenia, and, and whatnot, and autism, and you might be able to just cure it with a vitamin supplement or even if the vitamin supplements are bogus or unlikely to do much harm, and you just get the patient eating a healthier diet. Like he says, vitamin E. Well, you get plenty of vitamin C, let's say, from eating plant foods. You get enough vitamin E. You might need to supplement B12 if you're on a vegan diet. Uh, so anyways, do I think it's worth knowing about? Yeah, if, my, if I had a kid who had one of these things, I would read the chapter in great detail. But I do think for anybody, it's good to know it. Um, if somebody's got mental illness, you want to help them get better. It seems like you have very little to lose. The psychiatric drug side effects are terrible, massive, uh, progressive lobotomy versus... 
there doesn't seem much danger with this for most situations. Of course, you know, talk with somebody who knows a little more than yourself if you're new to this whole area. So anyways, I uh, hope that was interesting.